The second season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds appears to be chock full of gimmicky episodes. The one where Spock became human and acted like a total buffoon. Or the one where the show crossed over with the horrific farce of an animated series called Lower Decks. Or the one where they did a musical. No, I'm not joking. This isn't Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which could actually pull off a musical. This is Strange New Worlds, a Star Trek show. A show so divorced from what the franchise is supposed to be, it made Spock say the following. Mmm, mm, smoky and salty and sweet and soft and crispy all at the same time. I must have more. As I say, the show crossed over with Lower Decks recently, a show I just cannot take seriously. The original animated series was a serious and intelligent science fiction cartoon that was a faithful continuation of the original series. It could be watched by adults and children. But Lower Decks is an actual comedy that plays more like a self-aware satire of Star Trek, like the many spoofs of Star Trek that have been made over the years. I know there's some fans that love this show and see it as a great tie-in to the franchise, but I think this is mostly because it makes lots of references to Star Trek lore. But that's just not enough for me. Besides which, the character's constant referencing to other Trek shows and important moments in the franchise, it's all done purely in a tongue-in-cheek manner, laced with sarcasm to the point of practical fourth-wall-breaking parody. The series is made in the style of Rick and Morty and seems to be made for people who appreciate that kind of tone and characterization, which is to say lots of characters screaming and yelling at each other. Highly unprofessional Starfleet behavior as well. But there's not an awful lot of point in picking apart what is a comedy show based in the Trek universe, but the very fact that a supposedly serious Trek show like Strange New Worlds would even attempt to cross over and reference Lower Decks only further discredits that series by association. Oh, and Q! Don't! Don't yell Q! They haven't met him yet! They had kind of a Trelane thing going on. What? The episode features the Lower Decks characters of Boimler and Mariner, behaving in their usual insufferably clownish and juvenile ways. Well, in my defense, that thing has like zero instructions, you know? Speaking with contemporary millennial and Gen Z dialogue. I know, have you noticed how slow everybody talks? Yeah, and quietly. Yeah. Yet more fourth wall breaking. This is so utterly inappropriate for a Star Trek show. A total descent into farce. Honestly, it's just painful watching Mariner and Boimler interacting with the Strange New Worlds crew. Their fast-paced juvenile banter and constant quips make the episode unwatchable in my view. How anyone can sit through this on lower decks all the time, week after week, is beyond me. And there's even a final scene where the Strange New Worlds cast are animated. There's something extremely postmodern about all of the self-aware moments in these kinds of shows. Definitely won't happen again. Worf's on her. Dang it! It's as if the people writing them can't truly take the ethos and content of the franchise seriously. Perhaps that's the reason these shows seem to be so laced with irony and irreverence for the source material. Next up, there's going to be a musical episode on Strange New Worlds. It's like this season was built on the premise of throw as many wild ideas at the screen as possible to see what grabs attention. But the bigger the swings, the bigger the potential misses. It feels like a series that jumped the shark from its inception. For the past 14 years, we've had one serious year of Star Trek with Picard Season 3, which is overall a very poor return for this franchise. But considering how this new Trek era began back in 2009 with the first J.J. Abrams movie, I really shouldn't be surprised that this is where we are now, where fans are having to make do with these insulting excuses for Star Trek shows and telling themselves that this is good. As I was saying on the Salty Nerd podcast recently, you can't reboot Star Trek. Not really. I mean, it's not Batman or Superman. It's a chronology with its own history, events, dates, and a clear timeline of progression. But back in 2009, all of that was tossed aside for what was instead a modern Hollywood generic action summer blockbuster movie with only a superficial Star Trek veneer. Prior to that, Star Trek was always very much a niche franchise with a fringe audience. It really wasn't mainstream like how Star Wars was mainstream. It was a franchise for geeks and nerds, and I, for one, was fine with that. Because, to be honest, it felt like it was ours. We had a kind of ownership of it. 
But when the 2009 film came along, suddenly people who have never cared for Star Trek were talking about this film, because it was made for a general cinema-going audience, unlike previous Trek movies, which were made for the fans specifically. But when you make a product that's made to be as accessible to as many people as possible, the content gets watered down, especially at an intellectual level. It begins to play to the lowest common denominator. The bad robot films became focused on big explosions and huge action set pieces. These were thrill rides, with cheap stock standard Hollywood humour and cookie cutter formulaic storylines. And as the franchise devolved over the years, it became increasingly removed from its roots and its identity, to the point where the characters don't even sound like Starfleet officers, and the stories feel tonally and thematically unrecognisable. Suffice to say, the quality of the writing is nowhere near what it used to be. It's taken 14 years to reach what I would describe as the nadir of Star Trek, and one can only hope that there isn't anything lower than this. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.